closing out the year with a bang. Probably going to be my last shot of 2023, man. A little bit of, you know, TC and reaction. But I just want to say uh, Happy New Year's to all the subscribers, man. Really appreciate every single one of you that, you know, subscribes uh, this year. And to many more for 2024. So let's get this episode started. <laughs> Nice. Real quick, guys, that was a package farmer car. I actually picked up the ultimate cap. I've been eyeing this figure for quite a minute, man. And, you know, it was a little expensive in the aftermarket. Never found it in the wild. So I kind of decided to kind of wait it out. And I found a pretty good seller for a good price, man. Um, first impressions, real quick. It's a great figure, man. I, I got to give Hasbro props when it's due. And you can just tell, man, that whoever, you know, designed this figure, whoever sculpted this figure, they... They really had love for this character, man. And probably one of the best versions of Captain America there is, Ultimate Cap. It definitely destroys the old Hasbro and the old Toy Biz version. Just, you know, the sculpt all around, articulation, you know, we'll get into that. But let me go ahead and post this guy a bit more and see how I feel about it. But overall, man, I'm definitely loving this figure. Top 10 contender for sure. Starting DC Amber with a little bit of... Green Lantern action. Finally getting around to doing some DC Ember shots, man. I've always missed out because I'm busy or I'm doing something else. But I'm going to try to bust out a few this year. Also for Dragon Ball. But yeah, man. Starting off with a little bit of vanilla shot here. Something simple. Ideally, I want to you know build up to a little more dynamic stuff. Um, and I'm kind of crossing off my bucket list of Green Lanterns, man. I've always wanted to shoot you know, the Green Lantern, John, and... Um, you know, John Stewart, but I always find it difficult to kind of get the green lights just right. I don't know if it's my camera or if it's just green lights in general, especially these green lanterns were supposed to always be glowing and, you know, their effects are supposed to be glowing. You know, you try to build it around that, but I don't know how it came out. You guys can let me know, but yeah, man, something simple, something quick. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Finally shooting my Green Lanterns. I did a shot before this, but I didn't really record. But yeah, man, I'm using two green lights, left and right, to kind of resonate on the Green Lantern. Um, I'm getting two lights from the back. I don't know if I really wanted those lights, but hey, man, at least they light up the scene. And then I kind of had this little rocks, you know, effect suspended to kind of represent some meteors. But, yeah, man, uh, hopefully I did sell the illusion of him just kind of hanging out in space, checking out his powers for the first time. Everything I shoot, um, mascot-wise, when it comes to DZ, is kind of part of my little mascot DC universe. Everything's canon, so I'm building out a little story with these. You know, John's first flight. Moving right along, man, doing a little bit of a DC Ember shot right here. Kind of the whole idea behind this show was to kind of get the idea that, you know, Joker's kind of blowing up some blocks and got them trying to get Batman's attention. Um, I really enjoy how this Joker looks, man. This guy's just probably one of the best Joker I own in this Harley. A lot of people slept on this Harley, man. Like, I know a lot of people praise the Catwoman, but this Harley, I feel, is just as good. People don't tend to praise her much. It was actually a pretty simple shot, man. This whole thing fell apart on me. So if you guys see the poses are not exactly the same. It's because the whole thing fell apart on me right after I took the picture. But I think I still hit the general idea of how the original shot was. You know, Joker kind of just enjoying himself and Hartley kind of just being his cheerleader right here. Yeah, man, this shot was pretty simple. Uh, like I said before, this whole thing fell apart on me, so... 
I had to kind of recreate it from the bottom up. But right here, you know, I added a few props to kind of give the idea that I have a lot of firepower. That's why it's kind of blowing up the whole city block with. And then, you know, a little few missiles back there, a few bombs. And then the effects are all from the uh, Scrap Iron Man from G.I. Joe. And I tried to kind of light them up just to kind of give the effect of real explosions. I don't know. You guys let me know how I did, man. But pretty straightforward. Like I said, these figures are just great and kind of happy I'm finally getting around to shooting them. Might have to throw them in a little more. The gun is actually also from the Leon Kennedy from that third party, man. Um, I kind of wanted a gun that was kind of elongated. Just kind of fit uh, Joker's character. I guess that gun kind of fits. I just didn't it's kind of find anything else. And it, it was good enough. It wasn't in the forefront anyways. Kind of in the background, but Pretty satisfied with this shot for DC Ember as the final shot of 2023. I think I got a good reception. Let me know what you guys think. Got a real quick shot right here, man. Finishing off my DS4 DZ, uh, DBZ Ember. And just trying to shoot the Emperor of Evil right here, man. Phaser. Um, <laughs> all this is really happening because Servo told me to get off my ass and start shooting, man. I've been, I've been kind of lagging a little bit, but I kind of want to come around and just finish off my, uh, DC, uh, DBZ Ember, the shots I've never really completed, man. So I'm taking care of it now in, uh, is it February? Maybe January by the time you guys see this? I don't know. But, yeah, man, getting a little bit of freezer action right here, right before he destroys Planet Vegeta. Kind of the idea I wanted here was to kind of represent him kind of like, you know, rising from his ship when he's about to, you know, do the the final, you know, do the attack on planet Vegeta. You know, you have a little of you know, the asteroids around the space and just kind of him giving a final look to the camera before he destroys it completely. I mean, it's not super accurate to the, to the anime or the manga man, but, you know, I'm just kind of doing my own little interpretation of the destruction here. And added a few lights, man. I have two key lights in the back to kind of give the outline to Frieza. I used orange light on the left to kind of create this kind of sense of, um, you know, kind of give shine to the to the blast effect, you know. And I think, uh, if I remember correctly, his uh, his special attack is called Death Ball. I might be wrong, man. You guys correct me in the comments. And then right here, you guys can see a little bit of purple. I wanted to kind of give off almost like a purple hue off his ship, but. Yeah, that was kind of quick setup right now. As I said, man, I was talking to Cerebro, and it was pretty. It was actually pretty funny, man, because we were talking about kind of the whole idea that, you know, when something becomes popular in toy photography, man, you see so many people do their own interpretation of of, of that shot, right? Um, I guess for this case, uh, you know, yeah, we were talking about the new Mesco Doom. And how everybody was doing a shot of him sitting on the throne, man, and he was, you know, he. He tried to kind of give it his own spin on his shot that he did. And somebody actually messaged them and told them that, you know, thank you for not putting the doom on a damn throne, man. And it's kind of a, a funny idea that I talk to him a lot about, man, just as an artist. I kind of, you know, voice my opinion. And I think that's something I want to do on this channel. You know, guys, know, just like to try to be, you know, as honest as possible. And I think that, you know, a lot of people just tend to go with the flow, man. Yeah. You know, try to recreate the same thing, shoot whatever figure is the coolest right now. You know, just try to like, you know, just kind of go with what's, you know, the popular right now in the toy community. And it kind of, it, it kind of kills my vibe as a toy photographer, man. Because, you know, when everybody's doing the same shot, and I get it, we all do our own interpretations, right? Because we love this, this, um, this IPs. But when everybody's doing the same thing over and over again, man, and you see some laziness behind it where somebody just wants to put out a shot real quick just to get those likes and and you know get in the algorithm before anybody else and don't get me wrong man i fall into that fomo before i'm not i'm not you know perfect i've done it also but i think recognizing it is a good step and just seeing that you know sometimes you don't have to fall with the fomo man like right here shoot some old figures shoot some stuff that people are not really seeing man i feel that even though you might not get as much interaction on the algorithm i think it shows your uniqueness as a person as an artist and that was just kind of something i talked with deep a lot man because i really respect his work and i think he, he has a good you know unique view on the whole algorithm stuff and it's just you know appreciate talking to that guy and you know i appreciate him so 
just something real quick I wanted to talk about. You know, I see a lot from photographers just kind of riding this wave of like the newest figure and then we move on to the next. And we have short-term memory because we're getting so many figures so so fast. And I just think that, you know, take a step back, man. Shoot some old figures. Shoot some shit you guys haven't seen in a while. And just let your creative, you know, your creative, you know, ideas flow. Just, just let it kind of have this thing where you kind of give yourself a challenge. But then... Who the fuck am I to tell you guys what to do? That's just how I look at things. I like to give myself a challenge when I'm about to shoot some figures. And what better challenge to, to shoot some character or something that's not popular? quick slope right here i've actually been it's been a minute since i shot anything at all man i think i let most of december pass by january without getting any shots just a little busy man this this episode is definitely expanding over a few months at this point but finally back on the table happy to be back on the table with naruto i've been watching this show with my girl for a minute now man and i'm really enjoying it man it really reminds me of old school shonen jump you know old school you know just dragon ball watching dragon ball for the first time you kind of giving me that energy and I just can't stop watching it, man. I've been binging this thing. And uh, shout out to my girl one more time, man. She actually got me this Naruto for Christmas. It was a big surprise. I was looking for this guy like crazy all over Target and Walmart. But I couldn't find them and she got it for me. So now I need a few more to do some Shadow Clones. I think at least I want three. I think I'll be happy with three of these guys. But shout out to her. This was an awesome gift. And just in love with this figure man i can't put it down keep posting the shit out of it glad to finally be shooting it so yeah let's move on for those of you i'm pretty sure you know i'm super late to naruto but for those of you who are fans of the show uh, I'm, i hope I'm, I'm i'm doing this injustice if you know what i'm talking about you know on the final valley 
Naruto, kind of doing the whole power up, man. And I remember I actually just saw this episode recently, and I'm just watching him power up, man, and just how the light under his feet just lit up and over the over the valley. It was just a great scene. I kind of wanted to recreate that real quick. And yeah, man, let me know what you guys think. All right, real fast right here, doing Sasuke side of the shot. Now, sometimes when I'm trying to do a really specific scene from the anime or like uh, the manga, I usually either have the panels up or I have whatever scene on YouTube, man. And I'm trying to get as close as possible, get any detail right, you know, the poses, you know, effects wise, background wise. I'm always looking at all that stuff and just trying to make sure I get a smaller details. Um, as far as this figure goes, the Sasuke figure was kind of a disappointment, man, at least in comparison to a Naruto. Um, it wasn't as good. It wasn't a complete disaster. I still enjoyed the figure. It just wasn't as good, man. Kind of sucks, but eh, what can you do? You know, just you win some, you lose some. And I'm getting real tired of using the same damn effects over and over, man. I need to diversify a little bit. Using the same rocks as always, but ah, fuck it. Let's move on. And here we have the conclusion to those shots, man. You guys kind of already know what I was going for if you watched Naruto and, uh, just watched that episode recently, man. That thing was just so damn epic. It's actually the next day, man. I stayed up way too damn late setting up those shots. Sometimes I just get those, like, sparks of just wanting to do multiple shots, man. And sometimes I don't even realize how fast time is passing by. But, yeah, just, you know, something quick. Something simple. Um, It didn't come out quite as good in retrospect now that I check it after. Um, You know, yeah, I wish it was a little... A little brighter, better lighting, but overall, man, you, you try and you learn, and you know, I've never claimed to be the best at this, just having fun recording my displays and what I collect, and so, just, you know, trying to learn with every shot, so, definitely bring that on to the next one, yeah, let's keep it moving. Alright, guys, real quick, and I think I was able to pick up over the holidays was this Obi-Wan Kenobi Darth Vader. If you guys have been following the channel for a minute, you guys know I am a literal fanboy of Darth Vader, man. I just, I can't get enough of Darth Vader, man. This is my favorite character, my favorite villain of all time. And I'm just super excited to get what, in my opinion, might be the most definitive version of a six-inch Vader, man. I'm definitely... Now, a funny story, man. I actually missed out on this Vader the first time he went up, man. Uh, as you guys probably know, you know, this Vader was really popular, man, just because with all the extra things he came with. And, you know, especially the damaged helmet look that it comes with. And, uh, well, this thing just sold out quickly on all the sites, man. And then just one night while I was recording the early section of the episode for Dynamic Saturday, I kind of decided to just check out, you know, any of the uh, Japanese sites to see if anything was up, you know. And I kind of came across this guy from Min Min. And... Like, I mentioned this because I don't know if it was DHL or UPS, but somebody stepped on the damn box, man. And I was so damn pissed. I don't know if it was over at Nin Nin, and that's why they had it up. So the point is, I sniped this thing as soon as it went up. You know, I got my second chance at it from missing out the first time. I wasn't going to miss out on the Vader a second time. But the box came all crushed, man. You know, hopefully the, you know, I mean, the, gladly. The Vader wasn't damaged at all. None of the, you know, the pieces inside were damaged. But the box came all screwed up, as you guys saw earlier, man. And I don't know what the hell happened. You know, it kind of pissed me off. But whatever, man. As long as the figure is good, as you guys can see, this thing is just great. I'm loving this figure. Now, rant to the side, man. Let's get into this figure. And what can I say, man? This guy is an upgrade all over from the original version, man. As you guys can see, just the cloth cape, man cloth skirt like you know the shine on the gloves a new shine on the on the helmet everything for this better is an improvement over the old version um it's just <laughs> what else can i say man i know i say that a lot but the fact is this vader definitely killed it as you guys can see this thing is just all over amazing man the fact that they included a super, you know, all over around the wired cape, not, not, not just like the old one where it was just the edging, you know, just the, the edge of the cape being wired. No, this guy included full wire all around, even a wired skirt, you know, the possibilities for like just displays, man. This guy just 
it's an an improvement all over the old version man, all over the new hope version I and i think for sjf came only with uh um sword holding hands maybe fists relaxed hands and then uh belt holding hands but this guy comes with all of the above plus super expressive hands where it's just force choking you know force you know holding uh pointing fingers anything you would need with a vader man that's because the vader in this series and you know in this point in the in the galaxy and the in the timeline he's much more angry much more expressive so he's not the calm collective vader that we all know from new hope and you know one of the big accessories that attracted everybody to this vader including me is this head right here man for a six inch figure the detail that comes in that battle damaged helmet man just everything that comes with it it's beautiful and i don't you know, if I wasn't going to, you know, display it as and have it as my regular Vader, this would probably be the way I display the figure with the battle damage helmet, man. And this thing is so cool that it even made me want to pick up the, the old Obi-Wan from the series, man. I'm not the biggest fan of that figure, but shit, maybe I might need to pick him up just to complete this set. But, man, just overall, everything that's included with this figure, including, like, a battle damaged, uh, you know, uh, boys, boys box, and like you know effects for the lightsaber what I'm now real quick doing a side-by-side -side comparison man here on the right side we have the new hope version and on this side we have the obi-wan version now as you guys can see the shine is completely different on the helmets man this thing is definitely a more matted out look um while this guy over here on the left is definitely a more lore accurate shiny look that he had you know, through most of the movies and through, you know, most of the of the of the media that he comes out, man. This guy now looking at it, man, if you guys can see it, this guy really almost looks like the Ralph McCorian like look for Bader man, a much smaller helmet. It doesn't look like somebody's under the helmet at all. It's definitely much more narrow. And as you guys can see, it has like the cone down here. It's just a whole nother improvement with the skirt cape. I mean sorry, with the skirt the cloth skirt. It's definitely a big improvement on this guy. And just the shine on the gloves and the boots. It, it just, those accents makes this figure just stand out a whole lot more than this original version, man. It's even affecting me now that I'm looking at this for the first time. The day and night difference of these figures, man. It's crazy. Like, just, just look at this guy and just the cloth. It's just the cloth. It wasn't just on the, you know, the edge of the cape. It wasn't the best and um it's just as you guys can see this thing is miles ahead of the new hope version and um yeah i guess if i had one gripe with the new figure would be the cape how it sits as you guys can see right here around the edge i don't know how well you guys can see it but the original uh new hope version he had the like the cape tucked into the helmet and that's my personal look that i like for the cape and for when it comes to vader i like it tucked into the helmet it's just a, a badass look i love and for, just the way they wired this cape it's a little too thick to go under the helmet but everything about this vader is a thousand percent better than the original new hope vader now it is as you guys can see really really enjoying this vader uh the flow of the cape man just to add it wires all the little improvements they've made really takes this vader to the next level and what can i say i'm just messing around here a bit you know sometimes you don't need a dial to really portray your shot and that's kind of what i've been doing lately something really simple no dial just a few lights background and some props you rarely see vader get damaged when it comes to like fighting man but if you guys follow you know dark horse comics especially during the dark times force unleash you know now rebels and obi-wan it's always badass when he does get damaged just the idea of him still adapting to his suit, you know, early on and just getting into these battles that he doesn't really care how much damage they, you know, um, dealt on him, man. They just want, he just wants to get the job done. They, you guys know Bader is supposed to be a tank. He's just a rabbit dog that the Emperor points at and he takes care of the job. I did a few things for these shots, man. I kind of added this. TIE fighter in the back you guys can see there's like a flame effect back there then I kind of have it crashing down here you know you guys see all the behind the scenes the messy shit I have around but right here like you know I tend to reuse that impact effect with that TIE fighter I don't think it was shown good enough in the shot 
So I think I can recycle that, but I really like how that looks. So yeah, TIE Fighter just coming down and impacting. Then I have a few custom little, um, here like fleet troopers for the rebels. Rebel fleet troopers. So this one actually has a Punisher head with a new vest. This guy's just a regular one. And I added the smoke effect to kind of show off almost like Vader just stabbed them. And you know, little details like that. Ideally, I wanted to add this extra uh, custom kit bash uh, fleet trooper I had for the rebels, but I just felt like the shot was a little too crowded. I also wanted to add this uh, ATST to kind of give a little more of like a sense of a battle going in the background. But I, like I said, man, sometimes you kind of have to sacrifice things just because shit's too crowded and you just don't want the shot to be oversaturated, I guess. I don't know what the word is, but. Yeah, got two key lights right here, trying to do the yellow effects just to kind of give the idea of kind of beater in the sun. Finally, I had to light up that lightsaber, man. I really like um, how the effect hit the lightsaber, almost giving it like almost like a white streak, kind of really representing like how when a lightsaber burns super bright, it almost has a white with a red outline. I really like how that came out in the picture. Because uh, I think in my last picture with the Jedi, I forgot what it was, uh, somebody mentioned that the, the lightsaber wasn't lit enough to like really get that effect. So I really make sure to concentrate this time to kind of have the light pointed exactly towards the blade itself and kind of like block a little bit from Vader. I didn't want to give the effect that Vader is getting hit with the red light. It is a lightsaber igniting that light. And um, yeah, man. And overall, I mean... The shot itself came a little too bright for my liking, but we live and learn. You know, I'm not perfect. I like to do critique. I want people to critique my work. I want to get better, and that's the idea here, man. I'm critiquing my own stuff. I know where I could have done better, and I think I could have. I think I overexposed my picture a bit, but that's something to work on for next time. Came around to cracking open the Hislop has tank. Triggered a few people online for saying this shit was a little fragile. The tank is fun, but I just don't, I just think it is a little hollow. I think that's the main issue with me in the tank. It, it is a fun vehicle and everything, but like the, I don't like how the main gun is so loose. It doesn't really like set in flush and like just the idea of how like hollow it is on the inside. It just feels that if you play with it too much at one point one of the one of the main guns might snap that's my main issue but at this point in the in the time bro you guys probably seen millions of reviews so go check out a review if you guys want more details on him but yeah that's about it yeah so with that being said i kind of just shelved it for now i don't really have any like ideas to shoot it at this time so i'm not gonna Try to force anything i know you know sometimes people really force shots just because the new it's hottest thing i guess but not me man if i can't think of something creative to shoot or like you know some creative new look for like a shot i'm not gonna try to force it and on top of that i don't even have um fucking batteries yet so i haven't even put batteries on this little bastard so i'll wait it out but yeah that's the his tank now as far as the second one goes that i picked up Originally, I kind of wanted to have two, but man, this thing is so damn big and I barely have any space. So I'm just going to throw the second one up on Mercari or something. Maybe eBay. Try to get rid of it. And that's about it. Just summing my second one. Fuck it. Sorry for the shaky cam, though. I just came back from the gym and my shit be hurting. All right, guys. On to the next. All right, guys. Checking in real quick. Finally got rid of my extra hiss tank. About to send that out of the post office. About to head out real quick. Sold my extra Cobra Commander from my original package and sold a few legends. So, yeah, let's get rid of this stuff. All right, guys, check back in with you guys in a bit.
Nice. Something quick and simple, real quick. Wanted to shoot this Megatron. Probably not gonna get too much into this figure, man. I'm currently in the process of shooting my uh, top 10 of 2023. So, for the sake of not boring you guys, if you guys wanna hear a little bit more about these figures, go check out that video. Shameless plug. But yeah, we'll move on with a few things. As far as the shark goes, I kind of wanted to give this idea of Megatron kind of in, I don't want to say like a lab, I don't know, some kind of Decepticon Institute. But ideally, I used these capsules to either represent, I don't know if I wanted them to represent Dark Energon or then harnessing energy, some kind of effect. That's why I added the little Tamashi lightning effects in there to kind of make it seem like batteries. And this Megatron just shines light so beautifully, man. Something really simple. Really focused on the pose here. I hope it came out nice. But, yep, that's about it. Little MDLX action. Something I really wanted to talk about that I kind of messed up and we're not talking about it with the Darth Vader shot is backgrounds, man. I think a lot of the times backgrounds, especially when it comes to screen backgrounds, make or break the picture man it just they make and break the whole aesthetic of the shot the whole you know feeling of it and i had a really hard time finding something suitable for this megatron man and even for the vader and it kind of just made me think of how hard it is to find the correct background for specific figures especially how the light shines off of them the colors everything so yeah man one of the big tips i can give you is to get the correct screen especially with screens it's kind of hard to do a dark background that's why i usually up for bright stuff because the dark backgrounds just it just shows the lights that you're using reflecting off the screen that shit just makes it look messy but yep that's it Nice. Nice. Picked up a couple of things real quick. I was actually able to snag that metal cooler finally, man. I had originally missed the uh, pre-order as the, the Vader earlier in the episode, man. I just I wasn't able to lock this thing in because this shit was gone so damn quick. Um but eventually, uh, same story, man, checking, you know, some late night for a few, uh, you know, restocks. I know that this metal cooler was going for stupid prices, man, especially because a lot of people were trying to army build it. Um, but I was actually able to snag it for, you know, just the regular, uh, you know, Bandai price, man, the, the, you know, from overseas. So that was a pretty good price I got this guy for. Um, as far as the Goku, that came straight from uh, BBTS. I had him in my pilot loop for a while, man. I'm really loving this figure. But I'm not really going to get into him just because uh, I have plans for him on my top 10. Just like the Megatron. So, uh, you know, if you guys want to hear a little bit more of my thoughts on him, it's going to be through the top 10 video that I'm currently working on. So, yeah, let's get into it. Now, focusing on the Metal Cooler, man. This is one of my most anticipated figures of all year, man. This thing right here was... A surprise for a lot of us uh, SHF Dragon Ball fans. You know, uh, we kind of expected a first form cooler rather than a metal cooler. But for me personally, this is my favorite version of cooler, man. What was the, you know, the, uh, legendary Super Saiyan uh, movie for Broly and, uh, and the metal cooler movie. Those things were like staples in my childhood, man. I actually am, like I said before, bigger fan of metal cooler than the original cooler man just the idea of you know the getty star kind of recreating uh pretty much cooler's body and kind of this almost you know cybernetic terminator slash um kind of like living computer uh components to dragon ball was a really cool idea that really captured me as a kid and uh, it's, uh, this figure is beautiful, man. Look at the, how this thing shines. Just look at the paint application. I have been messing with it a little bit, so there might be some fingerprints on it. 
Um, that's kind of one of the, the downfalls to it that I'm, I'm not the big, you know, super big fan of how much fingerprint, but it's just something that comes naturally with the figure, but how beautiful this thing is, man. But I would have never expected in a million years to get a metal cooler, and here it is. All right, now let's go ahead and get into the figure, man. You guys know that I am a big fan of articulation, and this guy does not shy away from it. The way the figure moves, it is a little... What, what's the word for it? A little rough to move, but it's not a big deal, man. I think it's the material, and that falls into some of the gripes that I'll get into later. But the way the figure, the figure articulates pretty nice. The tail is articulated. Like, it has a good a good amount of range. It's not the greatest tail. I would want it to be a little better. But it's there, and it's just, you know, able to get into those poses you would have wanted to. Now, uh, as far as it being super articulated compared to the Goku that I just got or some other HHS, it's not the greatest. But whatever pose you really need, you can definitely hit it in that case. And I am just a big fan of the possibilities you can have with this metal cooler, man. You know, it's just... it's. It hits the basics you would expect from SH Figure Arts, and I'm pretty happy about that. Another thing I have noticed um, pretty much through the figure is this kind of waxy feel the material has, man. I've heard a lot of people talk about it online, that it has almost this almost like oily feel to the figure, as you guys can see all my fingerprints getting on it. And um, I understand where that is coming from it's interesting that the that the, there is a feel to that but i think it's just the type of chrome it has on it that kind of creates that sense of almost um like like a waxy feel and it leaves a lot of fingerprints but i think that's kind of like the main focus because the lighting is really great man you can see that mostly the what would we consider the armored parts for uh coolers you know final form well it's not this final form but uh you know this form um would be would be metallic and then you guys can see a different kind of uh, gray gunmetal type in the inside so real quick just wanted to go through a few things like accessories for cooler man i wanted to go ahead and get into this arm which is a really cool addition to the whole thing um it was pretty much the scene where goku destroys half of cooler's body and he finds out that the big getty star is the one controlling cooler pretty much or helping him out and he's keeping track of all his vitals and pretty much regenerating him with each attack so it's all the wires and like you know veins and all that good stuff that kind of regenerate us it reveals his arm um you know small things like that even though it's not articulate it's still much appreciated especially for the price they include a shoulder pad to kind of create the look um they also included the standard stuff you see with the Frieza type characters, which is like the holding, uh, you know, holding feet. So you can extend them on like, uh, you know, effects of the rocks, or you can have them holding Goku's face or Vegeta's face. You know, that guy was kicking their ass through the whole movie. And then they also included a bunch of hands right here, as you guys can see, a bunch of hands and, you know, a, a few faces included in there. Um, greeting face, smiling face, and like screaming, all the standard stuff you see in the SHF. I guess overall thoughts on the figure, uh, I really enjoyed it, man. There was just a few things that I had gripes about. One of it's like the whole fingerprint thing, but it's just being nitpicky. One of the big ones is definitely the material that was used. Um, it's this, you know, chrome plastic that you, they're using that definitely makes it feel a little more fragile and a little harder to move around you can definitely feel the friction in the joints and another thing was the tail the tail's articulation is miles below the original frieza and and, and even the the final uh his uh, ultimate form i think it's called uh for cooler man the one we got uh, the larger form of his and um and all and also I, one of the big gripes that really bothered me was this man look at the head peg now what is that man that thing just screams that it wants to break every time i change the head i'm super scared to change anything because even look at the plastic the plastic looks cheap it feels cheap i have no idea why they decided to go with this type of joint i don't think we've ever seen this type of joint before uh when it comes to the dragon ball line so i'm a little confused myself seeing this but that is the biggest gripe for the figure but overall um, those are just minor gripes. I really enjoyed this figure, but those are kind of some of the reasons, I guess, why I couldn't put it in my top 10. But other than that, this is a dream figure, man, that I never thought we would ever get. And we have it here in our hands. To every Dragon Ball fan, especially of the movies, 
this is a dream come true. Uh, I just shot it and you can kind of see the damn stand. So right now I'm kind of trying to hide it on the camera. See if I can get it just right. Try to hide that stand, but still kind of do like an angle. Kind of blast thing. I switch the side, maybe get a better angle, better height on the stand. There you go. I think that's a little better. Let me. Yep, I think that works right there. Got the good angle, height in the stand. Now, turn on some lights. And I think we're good to go. Finally getting around to shooting the legendary Super Saiyan Goku. Kind of the idea behind this shot was to kind of recreate that epic scene, man, where he, you know, finally kills Frieza with that final Kamehameha, people would call it. And other people call it the angry, uh, what is it, Blast of Anger, I think was one of the names. There's different names out there for it, man, but I always thought it was the angry Kamehameha that he kind of just finishes him off, even though it's technically a yellow blast. Um, but yeah, man, that scene is just super epic, and that's kind of what I was going here for. Um, yeah, so kind of the idea here was to use two really bright lights, trying to expose, use my exposure to, you know, super high to kind of recreate almost that energy effect with a lot of light going on. I have a light here on the left just to kind of give it that yellow glow you would get from a key blast. And uh, I lit up the back effect. I think the light's off now. It died on me. But ideally, I lit up the back, uh, you know, Super Saiyan 2 effect that comes with the uh, uh, con exclusive. So, as far as the background goes, I'm going to show you guys real quick. It's an actual, like, screenshot from the anime, man, from that final Kamehameha. And the idea behind here is that you zoom in so much or you crop it out to the point that it's not really recognizable for the know general viewer of the shot but they can still kind of recognize the effect you're trying to give so here i kind of wanted to make sure that the yellow outline at the edge of the screen was still visible to give the effect of like a blast energy surrounding goku make it so bright so it looks like it is him that's actually doing the final blast and then trying to really recreate those epic kind of you know final attacks from you know the the anime man that, that you know that we saw so much in Dragon Ball Z where like the character gets all overexposed around him because the, the energy is so bright it kind of you know it just blinds out everything behind them in the background so that was kind of like the whole kind of premise behind it All right, guys, this has been Dynamic Saturday, episode 11. I just want to say thank you to all of the people that make it to the end. Always with me, man. I know these videos are a bit long. And if you guys make it to the end, they're just, you know, hang in there with me as I have fun, you know, just with my displays, talking about what I picked up, man. I really appreciate you all. Um, I just want to give a few quick announcements. I did get this guy in. Um, and I'll be doing a live unboxing. So, yeah, I'm doing it, man. I'll go ahead and be doing a live unboxing soon. Don't know exact date, but be on the lookout. I'm going to have something special for my longtime subscribers and, you know, new subscribers as well. And I'm going to have a few announcements on that live as well. Um, as far as the episode goes, I did have to cut the episode short, which is not really short, but in half. It is about 45 minutes, but I had to cut it short um, just because I have so much footage over the past four months. And I thought I would just bring it over onto the next episode so the next episode is going to start off a few months back and then pick up to you know the current time but yeah as you guys can see i did pick up my first hot toys i want to unbox it with you guys i'll be going live soon and we can go ahead and just you know kick it man and just have a good time um as far as that goes uh remember to subscribe to the channel man i usually drop these episodes about i want to say once a month that's at least that's what i aim for sometimes it'll be you know once every two months or but i'll definitely drop a video once a month at least 
at least i'm trying to and um yeah just subscribe to the channel subscribe to my instagram subscribe to me on x that's where i usually drop some pictures so you know what i'm working on they'll be talking about dynamics already before i drop the episode and just having a good time man so yeah follow me on all socials i appreciate all of you this day to the end this has been another episode of dynamics saturday all right late guys Thank you.